I know this isn't the normal day for the Race Driver Coach Show. It's a Wednesday, but it's the 15th of September. And at 8 a.m. this morning, the Netflix documentary on Schumacher, called Schumacher, it was out. And I couldn't wait. I was sat there. I woke up like at five in the morning and I was sat there waiting for eight o'clock to tick with my notes ready or my blank piece of paper ready. Because I, I watch people who succeed. I study them. I take from them what they what I can and I teach it to the drivers. And this documentary gave me the opportunity to do that. Now, I was just looking on the Internet first to see the different kinds of reviews for people that have watched it and you know what? The Telegraph gave it one star. They use words like catastrophic. I was like, what are you on about? And then I saw on Rotten Tomatoes, somebody gave it a bad rating. I'm like, come on, guys. It depends what you go to a documentary for. If you want this cinematic sort of um, show, this film, or you want to really be nosy and find out what Schumacher's doing now, fine. You're going to be kind of disappointed, but it is kind of cinematic, actually. But if you want to find out what it takes to win in any sport and what made him different, these are the kind of things that I know you guys go to these shows for, these documentaries and even this show, to find out and to improve yourself. If you're in it for that, then you're not going to be let down. After that long intro, you pretty much know what you're here for. I'm going to give you seven things that I took from the documentary, and you'll probably have seven others that you actually take from it and that resonate with you and you can actually bring into your game to improve your racing game in your career. But the seven for me, uh, some of them are in car, out of car, general philosophy of life. But these are the seven tips, the success tips I want to bring to you, bring to the forefront just to help you improve your results. Here they are. My first point is top drivers are fighters. Straight away in this documentary, you learn and you understand that if you want to go toe to toe with a driver that's like Michael Schumacher, then you've got to be ready. If you look at the Senna's, the Mansell's of the world, um, Verstappen and Hamilton, you see how they're fighting now? They're not giving each other any room whatsoever on the track. They're elbowing each other off. You saw Schumacher do it in this documentary as well. Uh, I think it was Imola where he just drove someone off the road. This is what it's like. We all kind of say it's his fault. It's his fault. Who's in the wrong? But actually, this is what it's like. They, they rub your face in the dirt and they put you in a position where you decide if you want to crash or not. Anyone who's watching this that thinks you must be clean, you must be respectful, that's all well and good. But when you're fighting for your career out there, you go further. It's in the nature of the beast of a champion. They will always push the envelope. It's, it's not only what makes them great, it's also their downfall. So they do have more crashes. They, they are a bit, um, let's say, a little bit more rude and not so fair on the track. But that's just what you've got to deal with. If you're in boxing, it's the same. They'll deliver you a low blow. They'll be talking into your ear, trying to screw your mind up. They'll be biting your ear. If you want to be a champion, it's who wants it more. And when you put people in a cage together, which is like a track, really, and you've got two people fighting for this position, fighting for their career, and they want it more than most, they will go further than most. And obviously, that goes over the line quite often. And these drivers that are fighters are driven. They're driven by their fears, their insecurities. They're worried that they're not good enough. Believe it or not. They may be confident, and in this documentary it says it the same. He was worried about, am I good enough? Can I still do it? And every time you go onto the track, you have that whisper in your ear. And that's what forces you to outwork everybody else around you. So just remember, if you want to fight one of these guys, you've got to be ready for it. And you've got to give as good as you get. Lesson number two was become one with the car. Early on in the film, he says the car and I, it's like being at one with the car. This is what you can practice in karting as well as in the car. It's trying to make sure that that car fits you like a glove and you understand its nuances. You understand how it wants to be driven. You feel when it's getting to the limit. It allows you to dance with it. You're confident when you get to that level with a car. And then you can jump into a different car and get to that level quickly as well. So you do become one and you gel. That is what a fast driver can do. Instead of feeling awkward, 
uncomfortable, not sure, asking questions that are not really helping you when you're in the car and it just doesn't, you don't feel connected with it, you can never be quick. So this second lesson is really to highlight the importance of that and to make sure that you do what you can to feel comfortable in the car. If it is snappy, oversteering, you don't really like the understeer that it's got in it, you can dial that out, but also your style must adapt to it. Listen to what the car is telling you and adjust and give it what it wants so it becomes natural. Sometimes you have to do that. You're jumping in, it's not ideal, but I'm still, as a driver, I am still going to extract as much as I can, give it what it wants, make a few setup changes to go my way a little bit to my style, but really I've got to give this car what it wants so it drives around the corners as best as it can. And you see that in the wet. The wet turns everything on its head. Still, it's the driver that gets comfortable, that knows where the grip is that we spoke about before, but can handle the car that will go quick in the wet. And this is visited often. You can see the way Schumacher slides the car. It's an F1 car. It shouldn't be, you shouldn't be sliding it around, but he can still do it and hold a slide. There's a few shots, especially of the Mercedes later on in the show. It's amazing. There's a nice slow-mo shot of him. It looks like Singapore or somewhere uh, drifting the car. And that's not really saying that's the quickest way, but it's just showing you how he feels comfortable in doing it how you if you want to be fast you must be at one with the car get comfortable as fast as possible do as many miles as you can again if, if you can't afford to test get into a cart a cart can teach you how to drive in the wet can teach you how to be consistent can teach you how to handle it when it's not really handling as you want it to you can still use a go-kart and that's where most of schumacher's skills were learned and senna also said the same he was not very good in the wet. He just practiced it in the cart. I've got drivers who said exactly the same as well. So don't feel like you've got to do 10,000 miles in a car, kilometers in a car. You can practice this elsewhere. Lesson number three, outwork everyone around you. You see a part in this documentary where he's at Ferrari and it's the only garage. It's the only car that's being worked on and it's nighttime. Everyone else has gone home. Schumacher was there with his three or so mechanics working on the car, trying to get this, this shed that they had then uh, to perform because it wasn't a good car. So he put in the hours. When you work with a driver that outworks you as a coach, as a mechanic, as a team member, um, as, a, as a manager, you raise your standards, what you're going to do to bring to the party, to keep up with the driver. The driver drives everything. When you get to the team, they've got to see you as the hardest working person there and you deliver on track. If so, they're going to be around you. They're going to want to support you and give you everything they can. It's so important. And that's not just for team leadership skills. It's also just a basic, obvious success skill is to work harder than your competition. The more you put in, if they're just doing eight hours a day, but you're doing 16, you covered double their work rate every single day. And it's not just incrementally pulling away. You'll get to a point where they can't catch you up because you've put in the hours specifically designed to move you forward. What can you do today to outwork people? How can you apply yourself just that little bit more this week and grow, grow, grow? Eventually you will get the results. You must outwork everybody. Never see a teammate working harder than you. And it's not just to be fake to say, I'm going to stay later. No, it's proper work. We're going to make sure we do all we can. Lift every stone, have a look underneath, and you make sure you execute, execute, execute. The fourth lesson is you also need some luck. Now, he was kind of lucky, they said. This is what they said in the documentary, to get the F1 drive with Jordan. Because somebody dropped out and he was spotted and they gave him a chance. Obviously, that's a bit of luck, but really it was the way he was that made him stand out in F3 for people to notice him. So that's the hard work, giving him luck again. Uh, but you still need these opportunities. You need time in. You need somebody to maybe get injured. You need somebody to open up an opportunity for you to give you something. And that is what is called luck, but it's just opportunity. When you get there, you've still got to deliver. You've still got to have all these other traits that we say. So yes, luck is a part of it. And bad luck is obviously a part of it. It's the same thing. Like he's had bad luck now in his later years, since 2013. 
So it goes both ways. But just understand, if you're putting in the hard work, at least then you can create your own luck. So when luck does shine upon you and life and destiny gives you an opportunity, you're there ready to pounce. The fifth lesson is to make an impact. When you arrive at the team every day, people must know that you're there. You are there to work, obviously, but you're there to inspire them, to motivate them, to drive the team forward. And as an individual going for a career, if you're just a quiet mouse, you don't talk to anybody, um, you're very reserved, you won't speak your mind, you won't allow yourself to come out and forward. It's difficult for people to get the energy behind themselves to give you any kind of emotion. They're going to back somebody who inspires them. So this can't be this can't be faked because you can still be shy. You know, Michael Schumacher was still shy inside, but he came there with a purpose and that purpose made him step out of his shyness and forge forward. So I, this is just now it's, it's hard to craft this, but ask yourself now, have you been standing out enough in the sport, in your team, in your close knit team? Have you been leading them enough? Is your social media, which is a new thing after Schumacher, obviously, um, it's not wasn't really a thing back then. But is your social media pumping into the brand that you can sell to get sponsors? You've got to peacock a little bit. You've got to stand out. If you stand out for your driving skills and how you are on track, brilliant. That's your angle. If you stand out for how you talk, how you sell, how you market yourself, how you motivate the team, there's lots of different angles here. Not everybody's the same, but you will have something, a special quality that people will see in you and it will make an impact. And also on the impact side, I, I'm sorry if I'm speaking a bit fast, but I'm excited. I want to get this out. Making an impact is when you arrive at a championship or a new team and you set the very, you set a very good first impression. It's really important. So when you go and meet a team, be confident a brand new team when you meet somebody new be confident it's so important you've got to come across as the real you early on make sure you do that step up if you're in the boardroom you go there you look everyone in the eye you shake their hand with a nice welcoming hello i am and they know that you're there to do business you're not there just to sit in the corner make an impact the sixth lesson is take responsibility for your car's performance a great one in these one mate championships we've got now it's so hard to get in these top teams right it's probably two or three top teams and if you're not in them it's difficult because you think it's just a stock car we can't do much to it but actually you can do much to it you can do something to it because the top teams are i want you to take on more responsibility for your car not just to blame the team that they're not quick enough it's you as the driver to forge it forward and that is something that you do understand when you see this documentary as well he went to a team benetton they were they weren't really any good but he won with them he went to another team called ferrari it took quite a while but he turned them around to, from having a dog car to winning the title five times in a row then after that he went to mercedes and people in mercedes now say he was one of the key reasons why mercedes is so good nowadays because when he joined it Okay, his driving wasn't quite there, his motivation to be fast wasn't there, but still that person was there to drive it forward. There's something in that. When he was karting, in the documentary it shows you, when he was karting, he used terrible kit. He had tires that were used by other drivers and thrown away, but he was still winning. He didn't allow the performance of the kart or even the car when he was older to be the reason why he wasn't succeeding. He took it upon himself to say, okay, my kit isn't as good as theirs, but I'm still going to win. What can I do? And having them questions in your mind of how can I extract the most from this opportunity I've got, from this car, from this car, these tires, what can I do with my driving? My driving needs to be absolutely on point. So I'm going to learn the track more than everybody. I'm going to get the tires in, warmed up better. I'm going to make sure I don't have traffic in, in qualifying. You start to look for the gaps in the areas where you can make a difference. And then you get good results instead of focusing on he's got a better car than me. She's got a better engine than me. Blah, blah, blah. Boo hoo. Sort it out. Take it on yourself to make sure that no matter what kit you've got, you extract as much as you can 
but you feel at one with it and you make sure you take opportunity the most of all the other opportunities and areas where you can perform and outperform the other drivers this is on you you may not have the best kit but you can still win and the last lesson i want to talk about people's opinions carry little weight now in this film you can hear jean tot talking about okay this guy Michael Schumacher has won two championships. We've got him now in Ferrari, but he hasn't won the championship yet. We've had him for two, three years now, and he still hasn't won the championship. I'm not sure if this is our guy. He turned the team around. He could have won it in 98. He could have won it in 99, but he broke his bloody leg. But still, they're questioning. You've got the media saying, is, is he really any, any good? It's like, guys, you don't realize what he's done. He took the 96 car that was terrible like a bloody duck and he's turned it around to be a title contender and you're still saying or asking has he got it but before you get angry before you let these opinions affect you of other people understand no matter how much you do no matter how much work you do no matter how good you are you're still going to get people questioning your skills your talents whether you should be there it's just natural a lot of it, like the, like the review of this documentary that I said in the Telegraph, saying it's one star and it's just a terrible documentary. And I loved it, which I'll tell you in a moment what I thought of it. But you can't help other people's opinions. They're just going for an angle. They're going for story. They're going for headlines. They want to get their driver in the seat, maybe. People's opinions should not be your own opinion of yourself. Do not let them in. If it's a warranted opinion about how you can improve, Fine, I'll take it on. But if it's just just noise, it's just keyboard warriors, let it go, it's not important. And it's the same with the opinions that people have that saying, you're great, you've done so well, well done, great, thank you. You just move forward because people's opinions, just they are opinions, they're people's flash, you know, just a very quick snapshot of your life and they make a judgment. How can you give them any weight? So don't basically. So that's it, that's the seven. Top drivers are fighters. Become one with your car. Outwork everyone. But obviously you need the luck as well. Make an impact when you first meet people and keep that impact going. Take a responsibility for your car's performance and pay little attention to people's opinions. These are the seven things I took from that documentary and I'm sure you can get a load more that can help you move forward. Now my favorite parts, well, I think it's the climb and the turnaround uh, from when he went to Ferrari and how he did that. That's quite a fascinating story. And then another favorite part is when he actually wins the title, the first one with Ferrari, um, how emotional that is on the podium. They're playing the nice music. It's like, man, that's just to be a part of that would have been amazing. And then talking of emotions, when his son Mick talks about how he would give everything just to have a conversation with his dad now. And it's like, man, that nearly got a tear to my eye. So be prepared for that. Um, but wow, my conclusion. Overall, I loved this documentary. You can see what it takes to win. You can see what it took for him to win, how much he applied himself, and you can get all these lessons within it. Plus, it's an amazing story. It's a kid who didn't have the money to race, yet became one of the most successful F1 drivers. So all you drivers out there that say, I haven't got the money, this kid did it. Hamilton didn't have the money really to go all the way. He did it. Plenty of people are. So you should take that on as a belief. There's always a way. If you've got the, the, the willingness to work hard and you do work hard every day, and you've got a bit of sales skills, you know, you've got a bit of X factor and you're fast, but you've got the potential to be fast and you keep banging on them doors, you keep going things can happen. I promise you they can. And that's the same for anything in life, not just racing. Racing is very elitist and it's, you know, it's difficult to get in, but there's a plenty of people out there with cash. And if you look like you're investable and you give them a reason to invest in you, you can go far. So that's it. I'm going to give it five out of five because I loved it. And I'm going to watch it again before the week is out and I'll watch it with my drivers, get my drivers to watch it, but I'm pretty sure they already are. Um, I loved it and I think you will if you haven't already. I hope that you can take something from this video as well as a documentary. All right, guys, I'll hopefully be back <laughs> um, Monday before going to Sochi. Until then, see you next time.